Some stories I write, some are adaptation of old tales. Then there are the ones I design just for the body to tell. And then there are those I walk right straight into. 22 years ago, I was living in a high-end suburb of Portland, Maine. I lived on a dead-end street, right in the beginning of it. Busy dead-end street, a mile long, with several houses, a couple of businesses, and many cul-de-sacs connected to it. So there's always comings and goings, that street. On one beautiful fall day, I decided to take my two-year-old daughter, Bella, for a walk. Since she was a toddler, I had one of those backpacks designed to carry kids. So I plopped her in there, and I put on a warm jacket for it was a brisk fall day, and put on a cap. As you can see, I have no hair. And then I leashed our dog, Smudge, and we set off on our two-mile adventure. Ah, what a beautiful day. Smudge was sniffing every scent along the way. <laughs> He was definitely leading the walk. Bella, sitting behind my neck, was just there, bobbing to my rhythm, pointing at the beautiful fall foliage, painting the trees. Yeah. We got to the end of the street, a mile away from our home. We turn around and we start to head back. Well, as I was approaching the house, just about three houses away, I noticed that my neighbor had installed those invisible fencing, for she had dogs as well. And I was always curious about the invisible fencing thing. Back 22 years ago, it was kind of a novelty still. So she was outside doing yard work, and I waved at her, and she found my uh, impromptu sidewalk visit as a good excuse for a break. She came over, and we engaged in conversation about the pros and cons about the invisible fans. And that's when the patrol car pulled over across the street. The door opened, and an officer, female officer, stepped out. And we stopped talking, but we're still smiling, and we're watching the officer approach, and she came straight towards me. And her eyes rolled up, and she started shaking her head. And then she asked me if I had been walking around the neighborhood. Oh, yeah, I have been walking around the neighborhood. And then she asked if I lived nearby. And I pointed to my house. And then she apologized. She said, I'm so sorry to bother you, but we've had somebody call from the neighborhood three times saying that there's a suspicious man walking around with a dog and a kid. <laughs> That's all right, you can laugh. It's absurd. And this uncomfortable giggle and, and laughter you just emitted, it was exactly what my neighbor and I did. You know, we kind of smiled and we're like, what? It kind of hit us in a way that we're not expecting. We were not expecting it. And so, the officer apologized, walked back to the car, and drove off. Well, the walk was over for me in many levels. I said goodbye to my neighbor, and I started to walk towards my home, and this anger started to build up in my chest, and then this feeling of humiliation as well. It is funny to feel humiliation when the issue is not the color of your skin, but the ignorance of somebody's mind. Huh. And perhaps not even ignorance, but fear of the unknown. I got home, put Bella down, and I went straight for the phone. And I called the police. I'm, 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 the, I'm the man that was walking up and down the street, the suspicious one. Yeah, and, I, and I'd like for you to tell the person that I live on the same street and I can walk up and down the street anytime I feel like it. Oh, you've already called. 
I see. Ah, well, thank you. According to the story, the police told me the person had been mortified by their actions when they learned that I was a neighbor. Hmm. Looking back, I wish I had done something different, though, besides calling the police with all that anger and frustration. I'm not saying it's my fault, not at all. But back then, I was in the beginning of my storytelling career. I was telling a lot of folk tales, and there's a lot of wisdom to folk tales, but I wasn't completely aware of the power stories have to transform people. I wasn't aware of that the way I am aware of it today. Today, I know, deep in here, that stories have an amazing power to transform. I wish I had written a, a, a letter to that neighbor telling a bridge-building story. I wish I had um, perhaps uh, called the person and told them a story. Or, or even better, uh, called the town hall and organized a meeting so people who were afraid of diversity and had racial issues could come together and talk to one another through stories. Because now I know that stories begat understanding. Understanding begets respect. Respect begets justice. And justice begets peace. And that is the power of story. Must have a hole in my pocket. I'm sorry. I'm going to take care of it. Just a second.